My name is David Herlocker. I'm the interpretive naturalist with the Marin County Open Space District. When people see me walking around with this net, they always ask, hey, you're gonna go catch some butterflies? Today I'm gonna to show you that we can use this net to do some novel things that don't even involve insects. All right, so this is the hands-free technique of handling and interpreting a rattlesnake. So she doesn't want to climb into my net, but I can take the stick, I can lift the snake, up, oh, see Daisy, that's a few pounds of snake right there. And now we just have to loop the net, whoa, whoa. She's so big that looping the net is gonna require her to be down, there we go. So now you have her. What you wanna do is you wanna subdue the snake, again, without having to hold it in your hand, and then you can bring it out where people can comfortably stand around it, and uh, you can all watch it. So this snake is getting a little agitated here, so we're gonna let her out of the net. What I like to do is I like to transport the animal to a place where people can see it, and the snake feels comfortable, this snake is warmed up and very alert. While rattlesnakes are relatively common, rattlesnake bites are extremely uncommon. The truth is, most people in North America who are bitten by rattlesnakes are bitten when they're handling the animals. In fact, probably the most common thing that's said before a rattlesnake bite in this country is, dude, hold my beer. So one thing you can notice about this snake is the, the basic camouflage pattern sort of breaks down near the tail where the striking black and white pattern will attract a predator's attention. The predator then notices the rattle and might remember the last encounter with this creature and back off. So in this lengthy encounter, you might notice that this snake hasn't rattled once. It's not really upset. We've treated it with some dignity and respect, and now we can just let it go its merry way.